Atlanta on a crisp late autumn night. A city which has undergone major reconstruction through the 80s and early 90s, where tonight HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. We are live in the Omni, where first 1988 heavyweight Olympic gold medalist Lennox Lewis faces 1984 heavyweight Olympic gold medalist Tyrell Biggs in a fight scheduled for 10 rounds. Then in the main event, undisputed heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield faces surprise challenger Burt Cooper. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. Tickets here tonight were purposely scaled down to $25 so that Evander Holyfield could extend to everyone in Atlanta the opportunity to see a heavyweight championship fight. The last time Holyfield fought here at the Omni was on July 12, 1986 when he won the WBA Junior Heavyweight title with a 15-round decision, a scintillating fight against Dwight Muhammad Kawi. And new Junior Holyfield! Now in the wake of the Tyson postponement, the Damiani dropout, and amid the post-World Series fervor, Holyfield comes home again to what should be an emotional and charged-up crowd in this modern arena. Stances that bring us back here for Holyfield, Burt Cooper. Jim, this is a sort of college football this fighters home. fight. Lewis, as you can see, a more accurate puncher. And as you can also see, although Biggs is well known for his jab, Lewis throws more jabs than he. This is a matchup of two power forwards who like to move in behind big jabs. Rules, and for that, we turn it over to our unofficial official scorer, Harold Letterman. Lennox Lewis and Terrell Biggs will fight tonight using the rules of the Georgia State Athletic Commission. Three judges scored a fight on a 10-point must system. No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. And if Jim and Jim, if the fight is stopped because of a cut produced by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after five rounds have been completed. Up until then, it's a technical draw. All right, Harold, thanks very much. Right now, let's go to the familiar face and voice of ring announcer Michael Buffer for pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Omni Arena here in one of America's greatest sports cities, Atlanta, Georgia, where tonight, Main Events Monitor Productions in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts tonight, ladies and gentlemen, are sanctioned by the Georgia State Athletic Boxing Commission. The three judges assigned to this first bout will be Erwin Deutsch, Bobby Ezor, and Frank Skilbred. And the third man in the ring for this contest is Frank Santor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special bout in the heavyweight division scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with black trim. He weighs an even 231 pounds. He is the 1984 Olympic gold medal champion in the super heavyweight division. And now as a professional, his record is 19 and four with 12 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tyrell, the TV And across the ring in a blue corner, his opponent wearing the red trunks with black trim, weighing in at 230 and one half pounds. He also is an Olympic gold medal champion in the super heavyweight division from 1988. He's undefeated now as a professional, 17 and 0, 15 by KO, ranked number three in the world by the WBA. Ladies and gentlemen, from East London, England, Lennox Lewis. The main question as we go into this fight is whether Tyrell Biggs can muster the same kind of, kind of enthusiasm and energy as he had against Riddick Bowe. If he does, he can make a very good fight out of it, perhaps even win it. Among heavyweight contenders, Lennox Lewis is ranked third by the WBA, fifth by the IBF, and sixth by the WBC. Terrell Biggs, after his loss to Bo, is no longer ranked in the top ten by any organization. Lewis 
Davis comes out firing and lands a right hand to drive Bo into the ropes. Great, there you go. Yeah. Make it Biggs, not Bo. You may be thinking of the future, Larry. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of something that might happen down the road. Looks a little soft around the middle to me. Doesn't look as sharply trained as was the case against Bo a couple of months ago. Biggs told us he only had two and a half or three weeks in which to get ready for this fight. And maybe Lewis senses that and has made a determined effort to come out of the blocks extremely fast. And now Biggs tries to get the jab going. And you know, it's unusual for Stop, don't put that. the book on Lennox Lewis is that he's a very careful fighter. Works behind the jab. And for him to move out of the blocks like that, uh, Jim, is uh, quite a surprise. He looks like he wants to get it over with in the first round. Clearly wants to make an impression on American viewers and the American boxing writers seated at ringside. When Terrell Biggs can get the jab working, he is a very stylish-looking heavyweight. Wild right hand just missed by Lewis. One of Biggs' biggest problems in the, in the past was that he tried to punch and get out of the way at the same time. And it took all of the sting out of his punches. He said tonight that he's going to sit down on his punches and he finally realized that he has to hit you and hurt you when he fights you. It's not any amateur. Both men are landing the jab here. Biggs has not tried to follow with anything. Lewis is the one who is throwing big right hands over the top, most of which have missed so far except for the one early connect that pushed Biggs into the ropes. But as you can see, Tyrell Biggs is fighting from a flat-footed stance, which is very, very unusual for him. None of the side-to-side -side movement, not on his toe. Lead left hook just missed for Lewis. Now two right hands land, and another. And Biggs ties him up. Round one coming to a close. Lewis lands two more right hands. Biggs in a little trouble, but the bell is going to sound. We spoke about the amateur attitude that might be ingrained in these fighters from their long amateur histories, but uh, right there, Lennox Lewis showed us some real professional attitude. relax and use your jab, okay? He certainly did, Larry. He came right out bombing. Just stay relaxed, okay? Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed, Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. There you see Lewis squaring off and trying to put some real hurt on Biggs. Same sequence, different angle. It's unusual for a British heavyweight of any kind to fight this way. You know, we're usually used to seeing them wanting to lay back amateur or professional. Well, you know, I, I did mention the fact that John Davenport, an American trainer, is his trainer, moved over from New Jersey. But again, John has worked mostly with amateur fighters. But you can see that uh, Lennox Lewis looks like he certainly has advanced uh, quite a bit. Since well, he was exceptionally days. aggressive in his last fight against former cruiserweight Glenn McCrory. And he has come out firing again tonight. Lewis, once again, pinning Biggs against the ropes with right hands, and now Terrell pivots off the ropes and lands a couple body shots. There's that trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time. You saw Biggs flick that left hand out, didn't quite reach Lewis with the punch. There it is again, short with the jab. Well, Larry talked about the amateur experience. Biggs was a great amateur where the payoff is for putting your glove on the target. In professional boxing, you should put your glove through the target. And it took him a long time to learn to even try that. Well, Jim, I think you should put your glove 
through the target, whether you're an amateur or a pro, because if you hit a guy with a stiff punch, you knock him off balance, and you can hit him with, with two or three more. There's a trickle of blood now from Terrell Biggs's mouth, spilling over the lower lip. Left hand was solid. If you saw Biggs Tyson in 1987, you know that Terrell gets a very pained expression on his face, almost as though, as though he's about to weep when he's being badly beaten in the ring. Traces of that expression are already beginning to creep around the eyes of Terrell Biggs tonight. Lennox Lewis look, looks like much the stronger guy physically, Jim. Looks like he can handle uh, Tyrell on the inside. There was a solid jab from Biggs, and now he tries to follow up to the body and lands twice. And Lewis continues to step forward. That right hand did not connect. Great, there you go. So the crowd loved the effort. Uppercut is solid, and Terrell Biggs once again pinned against the ropes. And Biggs with a left to the body and a left over the top. Good stiff left hook by Tyro Biggs. And Jim, this is the first time I've ever seen him fight this way, completely flat-footed and really trying to bang away. That's what he told us he was going to do in the interview, and that's what he's doing. Ten seconds to go in round number two, and in the second half of this round, Biggs has started to come alive a little. Stop, stop, stop. And we remind you, coming up a little bit later in the evening, our live coverage of the heavyweight championship fight between that man, 29-year-old Evander Holyfield, in his hometown to take on the opponent of the week, Smokin' Burt Cooper. Once again, if you're not a boxing fan, the intention for Holyfield tonight had been to fight Francesco Damiani of Italy. He dropped out less than a week ago with a twisted ankle. Burt Cooper is the chosen opponent with less than a week's notice. And some people think that Cooper will be a lot more dangerous for Holyfield than Damiani would have been. Hey. Jab right hand. Hands up. Start stepping in here, okay? Start stepping in here. Remember, but step in with your jab right hand behind you. Okay? Let's go. Stay here. Stay here. Very often the, the difference in fights like these is you have one fighter on the way up who's never had his shot, still has a dream of being a champion. The other fighter has have his has had his shot. Can the other fighter, meaning Biggs, really sustain his enthusiasm through a barrage of punches. Well, Larry, if, in fact, Biggs can land a couple of good, solid punches, he can get that adrenaline flowing. But he can get discouraged a lot easier than, uh, than a Lennox Lewis can get discouraged in a fight. And right now in this round, he's already taken two discouraging right hands. That one just missed. But this is rapidly deteriorating toward target practice for Lennox Lewis. There's a good stiff jab, and another. And there's the right hand he was supposed to follow with. I like the way Lennox Lewis goes back down to the body with that left hook after he throws a combination to the head. things for which Lewis has been criticized in the English press is an inability to put punches together. So he has been working on that. One thing I noticed with Lennox Lewis, there's that left hook underneath again. One thing I noticed, he really doesn't faint as much as I think he should faint. He walks, he gets within punching range and snaps that jab right out. Sometimes it's good, you throw, faint a little bit, let the guy fall for the faint, then you nail him. Very little head movement for Lewis. Could be a problem later on, particularly for a guy who's six feet five inches tall, and down goes Biggs from the solid right cross. Four, 
That was a good, Five, solid right hand right six, on the chin. Seven, eight. Terrell's going to get up at eight. Right. Here we are. Gets a little breather. He showed courage against Bo. And there's another right hand, and that might be it. Two, three, I think that Tyrell is starting four, to think that to himself, five, Jim, that that might, six, might be it. Now he's going to gonna make one more try. Eight. You okay? You want to go? No three knockdown rule in effect here. No three knockdown rule. So Terrell can go down again without automatically being out of the fight. Both knockdowns were on the right cross. Lewis throws another one. Biggs goes down again, and the referee's seen enough. That's an impressive victory for Lennox Lewis. A good scalp to have. And I'll, I'll go in the ring and find out where he's going from here. Okay, let's do that, Larry. <laughs> See if he's going to pick his next opponent by committee or who's going to pick the opponent. Well, you're right. He told us before that he was very enthusiastic about going ahead with top flight opponents, but that his business managers had to temper him. My interpretation of that was he wants to fight bums and they don't want him to fight anybody that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, but now he has the most credible name yet on his dossier of vanquished opponents. And for Biggs, whether he will listen or not, surely several people will advise him that this should have been the last time around. Well, you know, he was very, very impressive in this uh, performance, Jim. Come right out, look to get the guy out right away, search and destroy. That's what he was doing, and he did it. You know, one of his, uh, his hobbies is playing chess, Lennox Lewis. And I thought how appropriate for a guy who has a reputation as a boxer. But uh, he didn't play chess out here. He was playing search and destroy Nintendo. That's correct. All right, let's take a look at the two three knockdowns make it in round number two. There was the first solid right cross, as you said, Gil, right on the button. Terrell making the mistake of coming up with no glove in front of his face. Anytime you slip a punch, Jim, as you said, he should have come up throwing a left hook, even just to protect himself. But in instead, as you can see here, doesn't do a thing. Just stays there and bang right on the chin. Lewis looked like so much strong. He looks so much stronger. Here's the second of the three knockdowns. There's the wild left that Biggs threw in attempted retaliation. And clearly he was still groggy from the right cross that produced the first knockdown. Yeah, the second, the second knockdown was, was certainly was not a solid punch. You can see it just about caught him in, almost in the back of the neck. But you can see. And now we'll take a look at knockdown number three. They were against the ropes as Lewis tried to finish things off. The uppercut was vicious, and Biggs had had enough. He certainly did, and if you, you take a look, he looks really like he'd been batted badly in the three rounds. the uppercut that set up the final punch. So Terrell Biggs is waved off after the third knockdown and Lennox Lewis has the 18th win of his career, the 16th by knockout. And we go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Santor stops this bout in the third round, enforcing the three knockdown rule. The official time, two minutes, 47 seconds of the third round. The winner by TKO victory, still undefeated, Lennox Harold Letterman, a quick clap.
The arena holds 17,000. Promoters anticipated that 14,000 of the seats will be filled. And indeed, if perhaps not quite that many, there is a sizable crowd on hand. In a moment, they'll see the spotlight fall on their hometown heavyweight champ. life there's nothing like being a conquering hero and coming home that especially defending the heavyweight championship of the world and he's got an uncharacteristic smile on his face as he come up this fight probably has cost him three or four hundred thousand dollars because he could have gotten that much more money to fight in Atlantic City or Las Vegas. Well, again, he wanted the hometown people behind him, and they're here. won them all and now the crowd goes into the characteristic chant that dominated the audio portion of the World Series for the three games that were played here in Atlanta I don't know if it's politically correct anymore to do a tomahawk chop but it may be the most appropriate place for it because they're looking for Holyfield to use the chop in the ring and certainly Cooper will be hoping to be brave. 26 and 0, 21 KOs, the overwhelming majority of those fights in the cruiserweight division. Remember, he only became a heavyweight less than three years ago. And we'll look at the tail of the tape, and you will see that among several advantages, one of them is that Evander has a significant height advantage over Cooper, three and a half inches in his favor. Cooper five pounds heavier, Holyfield the more mature of the two fighters at 29 years of age. I think we should point out here, Jim, that Holyfield really didn't weigh 210 at the weigh-in. He wore his shoes and his uh, sweats on. Uh, he's been training for two and a half of the last three months with great intensity. His weight really was down around 26 or 27. Punch that numbers, Larry. And here we have a, a cross-section view of how active these fighters are and the kind of punches they throw and how accurate they are. And you can see Holyfield lands a very high percentage of the shots he throws. And here you see the number of jabs as well as hard punches they will throw. And for Cooper, the jab is just a rumor. And the rules of the bout with Harold Letterman. Evander Holyfield and Smoke and Bird Cooper will fight tonight using a combination of rules from the Georgia State Athletic Commission, the IBF, and the WBA. Three judges will score the fight on the 10-point must system. No standing gate count, no three knockdown rule, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And Jim, if the fight is stopped because of a cut produced by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after six rounds have been completed. It's a technical draw up to the end of the sixth round. Harold, are we sure there's no three knockdown rule? <laughs> Absolutely, Jim. No three knockdown rule in a world title fight. All right, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Main Events Monitor Productions, in association with Rick Parker Presents and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, let me have your attention, please. Last week, one of boxing's fine young champions was injured in an automobile accident. Tonight, he's home and well on the road to recovery. He's a two-time world champion and currently holds the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship of the world. His name, Vinny Pazienza. On behalf of the fans here in Atlanta, Georgia, and the millions of fans watching around of, of the world, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause and a wish for a speedy recovery to the Paz. We love you, Vinny. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is sanctioned by the Georgia State Boxing Commission, Chairman Lindsey Rouse, Commissioners in attendance, Dr. Ron Stevens, 
Paul Carter and Dr. Chris Vaughn. The Chief of Officials, Jerry Michael. Physicians in attendance, Dr. Victor Bouquet, Dr. Jack Burge. The timekeeper, Phil Latigo. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Al Pruitt. This bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee, Supervisor at ringside, Al Goodman, and the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor in attendance, Alberto Sarmiento. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a 10-point must system are Isidro Rodriguez, John Rupert, and Sheila Harmon Martin. And the man in charge of the action, once the bell rings, working for the 56th time in a title bout, is referee Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing the black trunks with silver trim, weighing an even 215 pounds. He has a professional record of 26 victories with seven defeats. And he has demonstrated his punching power, scoring 23 KOs in those 26 victories. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number 12 by the IBF, fighting out of Salem, Virginia, the challenger, Smokin' Burt Cooper. And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent, wearing the blue and gold colors and weighing an even 210 pounds. This 1984 Olympic bronze medalist was the first of his great 84 U.S. Olympic team to win a world title as a professional. That was for the Cruiserweight Championship. He now is a two-time world champion with a perfect record of 26-0, 21 knockout victories. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, presenting... The undisputed, undefeated, All right, this is heavyweight good. champion of the world, Evander. Real, real, holy deal. If he goes right there, I'm not going to call it low. Okay? Now, this is for the championship of the world. Expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on. Come on. Question in my mind, Gil. Since Holyfield looks dry and a little cold, will he come out here and really just take it out of Cooper immediately, let him know he doesn't have a chance to win, or is he going to let Cooper build his confidence? Well, you know, I, I think this first round is very significant. It's again, in, significant again in front of the hometown people. Maybe trying a little too hard. You have to remember, he, he hasn't had a fight in 217 days. And Bert Cooper has been an active fighter. And while Cooper has broken a sweat and does look warmed up, Evander Holyfield, as Larry Merchant pointed out, is completely dry. And Holyfield starts out establishing the jab. Cooper throws a long right hand and misses. Evander will not want to let Cooper inside with his face on his chest. That's where Bert is most effective. Good body punches by Holyfield. Cooper loses his balance. He was in serious trouble there for a moment. And Holyfield hit him twice when he got himself straight. Holyfield wobbled him, wobbled him a little bit with that left hook. And he got an uppercut in there, too. Cooper is groggy for a second. Holyfield with a chance for an uncharacteristic early knockout. He's not normally that kind of fighter. Been six years since Evander Holyfield scored a first round knockout. Back when he weighed about 180 pounds. The right cross was a beauty. And down goes Leonard Cooper. The left hook in the body, Jim, was the punch that really hurt him. After the right hand, he dug a left hook underneath. Beautiful left hook to the body. Long time to go in the first round. Cooper comes over the top with a right, but he left himself open. There's that quick right hand of Cooper's on the inside. Very effective with that right hand, Cooper. He looks as though his head is clearing. Punches up. Hey, hey, get those punches up. Come on. You see.
see a guy go down like a body shot. And then you think of Tyson Spinks. Another right hand right on the button, but that time Cooper didn't budge. Come on, Brandon, keep him up, let's go. Well, Evander is surprising me. He's really not using any lateral movement at all. He's right there. He's fighting, fighting with a fighter. And this is what he said he wouldn't do. The next time you go down, it's going to cost you a point. Then where are you coming from? Evander didn't, 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 really didn't like that low blow. Pulled his trunks down even further. Now Cooper is starting to land that right hand over the top. He's gotten it in there twice. Holyfield off balance after missing the right, but he comes back with a left of the body. And Cooper's covering up again. Well, Evander is getting the best of this round, but he certainly is fighting a Cooper-type round. I agree with you, Gil. We all thought that Cooper was a good opponent for Holyfield because he would have to box and move against him as he will against big heavyweights, including Tyson. But he's elected to take the initiative. Yeah. Stay close to him as you can. When you get in there, dig that body. Okay? Yeah. Come on, stand up. You just heard in the corner, they're telling him to go for the body. Apparently, they saw a soft underbelly there. And Holyfield was following orders, apparently, because that was as wicked a body shot as you'll see him ever land. of the accuracy of Holyfield's punching before the fight. He landed 49 of 76 punches, according to punch stat in round one, 65% connect rate. And give Cooper credit for surviving that. He's, he's come here determined to fight. Of well, course, some people look at Holyfield Foreman and say, well, Evander doesn't have a heavyweight punching power. Well, this is the Cooper, in my opinion, at Ford Ray Mercer. He certainly got hurt with that left hook to the body, but he got up and he's bombing back, as you can see there. He's determined. We've got a war early on. And so many things can happen in a fight when guys are fighting the way the Holyfield is fighting Cooper. They, they can bang heads, they can get busted up. I mean, I'm sure that they're very concerned in Holyfield's corner. In my opinion, he can, he can use lateral movement to just completely outbox Cooper, but he's, he's chose to fight him and get him out of there. A lot of people asked Holyfield's co-trainer Lou Duva about the mental adjustment problem of fighting somebody on one week's notice, and Duva said, well, I want my guy to get hit a couple of times. It'll clear his head and wake him up. Well, he's been hit a couple of times, Jim. We also have to wonder, Gil, whether this crowd enthusiasm hasn't stirred Holyfield up. Well, that's what we were talking about. He's fighting in front of his, his hometown fans, and he may be trying to be a little too impressive. He's got nailed with a couple of pretty good punches this round. Holyfield digs a left to the chest. Cooper has landed two or three straight rights. Well, you know, most Philadelphia fighters are left hookers, but you have to... You have to really watch Bert Cooper's right hand. It's a sneaky, short right hand. That's one area where he's gotten a lot better. He was almost exclusively a left hooker early in his career. Of course, that was what Frazier was teaching. Right hand to the body by Holyfield. Cooper wobbles again. Good uppercut by Cooper. That was the Mike Tyson combination. Wide right hand that bring the right hand underneath. Good left to the body by Cooper inside. And the right hand. There's that sneaky right hand right on the button. Since the knockdown midway through round one, it's been an even fight. Coming to a close, Burt Cooper establishing himself, Evander Holyfield banging away. Right, let's get back time. Ho, ho, ho. Listen, I want you to sit down on this round, you understand? Sit 
Let the other know. Stop tying him up. Let him fire. So use your defense. And when you make him fire, make him miss him, then hit him in the body. You see? So we're tying him up and using a lot of energy. Deep breath. Yes. All right, now take a deep breath. Don't pull it in. Suck it in. That's it. Suck it in. Keep hitting that body. Slip his punches on your way in. Keep hitting that body. Going third round, right? Yeah, third round. Uh, third round. That's right, take a deep breath. You're hitting him good to the body. Be first. Don't let him get off. Come Come body, that's what you're doing this guy. Huh? Don't be tying him up. Use your defense. Walk right around him. Walk right around him. It's pretty early for a fighter to be asking what round it is, Gil. So I don't know how much longer he's prepared to go at this pace. But on the other hand, they're telling Holyfield in his corner to play a little bit more defense. But Holyfield he lands a left hook, and Cooper wobbles again. Cooper grins as if to say you didn't hurt me. That usually means you did. And that's exactly what he did with Ray Mercer. He'd take those bombs, bite on the button, and then he'd grin at Mercer. I think uh, Cooper's soft spot is to the body, and I think, really think that's where uh, Georgie Benton told Holyfield to go to work, to the body. Yeah, the instruction was quit tying him up. You waste a lot of energy that way. Bang to the body instead. Come on, thank you. Easier said than done when the man puts his head right on your chest all the time. And again, even though Holyfield, in my opinion, is winning the fight, he's fighting Cooper's fight. And there's that big, there's that sneaky right hand of Bert Cooper's. And Holyfield wobbles in the corner. The champion in trouble. Cooper bangs away. Holyfield almost goes down. Mills Lane's going to call it a knockdown and give him the count. Evander Holyfield floored in the third round by Bert Cooper. And a long way to go. You've got high drama in Atlanta. There's that sneaky and right hand, hand, Jim. Holyfield in serious, serious trouble. And he's overworking that right hand. A long way to go. Holyfield almost went down again. Holyfield just really doesn't know where he is right now. His head is starting to clear. He's right fighting now. on heart alone right now, Jim. Heart alone is keeping a van of Holyfield up. And Cooper may have punched himself out a little bit with that flurry. Oh, what a right hand by Holyfield. And now it's Cooper who is standing stock still. Sensational right cross. Holyfield landed to start this rally. But Burt Cooper won't go down. You're looking at one of the men of Holyfield. Better watch out and better remember defense. Believe me, right at this moment, anybody can get hit, can go. Holyfield misses the right. Cooper lands. Here comes Evander, though. One of the memorable rounds in recent heavyweight history. It isn't even over yet. Evander is fighting strictly with heart at the moment, Jim. No brains, no smarts, just trying to outgut the other guy. There's that sneaky right hand again. Bang, right on the Holyfield chin. Evander is wobbling as the round comes to a close. get much better than that but it shocked a lot of people here we'll find Cooper coming in though he was tired there, there's the punch that really hurt Holyfield. Paying the price of not fighting the fight he planned for. And here, this is just an example of one man's incredible determination, Gil. He has never been knocked down. Tremendous conditioning. And he took over that round with about a minute and a half to go. But Larry, in a heavyweight fight, one punch by either guy can change things completely around. 
Well, you saw it happen twice in that round, gentlemen. And there's that right hand. I, I, as I say, Bright works that overtime. Look at the will of Evander Holyfield staring Cooper in the face and pounding away. And what about the will of Bright Cooper? He's got he got nailed with some. He told us to yesterday get to that last he would round. never quit again. That's exactly right. He's proven it now. We questioned him about that. Jim took his hat off, said he'd never quit. I guarantee I'll never quit, and he's not quitting. A left hook bomb inside by Cooper slows Holyfield down for a second. For the life of me, I don't know why Evander Holyfield is not using lateral movement to going side to side. He should be boxing. Could he be badly overtrained, Gil? Well, that certainly is a possibility. Three months in the gymnasium, changing opponents. Evander told us that in the last 10 days, he slowed down his training because he was really ready more than two weeks ago. That's very dangerous, particularly for a big fighter. Cooper's punches seem to have slowed down now, Jim. I think that right cross in the middle of the last round from punches. Holyfield had but a lot he, to... he would be dangerous, Bert Cooper, if he was falling down. There's that right hand again. This appears to be one of those fights, Go that Holyfield said he wasn't going to fight anymore, that he wasn't going to just go in and trade punches. Larry, I just had a suspicion that, that Holyfield was going to fight this kind of a fight, and I still felt that he'd win the fight. But again, Bert Cooper has been the more active fighter by far, with Holyfield having a 217-day layoff and Cooper having four fights, I think certainly has help, helped Bert Cooper. And this has been another largely even round with both men having big flurries. Cooper grinning again. Holyfield lands an uppercut. Every time they break from one of those clinches, Evander has to watch for that right hand. What Bert Cooper does, he takes his right foot, he steps over and chops with that right hand. I'm surprised they haven't spotted that in Evander Holyfield's corner. But Cooper is definitely slowing down now. They, they the part of this round. Walking to his right. That's what he does. They have a heavyweight fight here every 21 years, but they sure have a good one. <laughs> Harold Letterman, how do you score it? Larry, 39 to 36, three rounds to one, Evander Holyfield. The third round, they definitely called a 10-9 Bert Cooper. Even with the knockdown, I thought Evander Holyfield fought back enough from a 10-8 to bring it back up to 10-9 late in the round. So I've got it 3-1, an extra point for Evander in the first round. I'll give him. Wait. Just pick your shot. Pick your shot. Stay close to him. Give some water. You're wearing him down. You're wearing him down. Now just walk around him and pot shot him with the right hand. Hit him in the body. You have a good defense. Right back in, baby. Right back in. All right. Now the guy's with the mouth. Bert Cooper may be the only consumer in America with more money to spend this Christmas than he anticipated about a month ago. And if he keeps this up, he's going to have a lot more money in future Christmases. It very well may be. And in Evander Holyfield's corner, they told him, told him to walk Bert Cooper around inside and bang him to the body. But that's what Cooper's been doing to him. Up there, the big right hand. And now Cooper's, Cooper's in trouble. Well. Holyfield banging away with the right hand, but Bert won't go down. Oh, look at that. These are awesome punches. Cooper has just about had enough. And he decided not to quit. He almost quit and decided not to do it. And he'll take punishment for it. The uppercut's been the punch, Jim. There it is again. The uppercut's the punch. There it is again. Avanza found the key. There it is again. Yep. Left to the body, right uppercut up the middle. He's landing it over and over and over. Again. I think Mills Lane was right on the verge of stopping it about 10 seconds ago. But you 
can't stop it when Cooper has been this courageous. And Evander Holyfield is showing signs of being tired. And believe me, an uppercut is a very effective punch, but it's dangerous to throw from outside. Round's only half over, and Holyfield is punched out. Punched out and can't throw anything right now. Timeout now as Mills Lane wants to look at Holyfield's glove. It is broken. The right glove is broken. Both fighters are going to get a long rest. And I think that Holyfield needs it more than Cooper, despite the fact that Cooper's been taking the battering. I don't think Holyfield would have thrown another punch for 20 or 30 seconds. You know, sometimes the opportunity to fight for a title, especially the heavyweight title, just makes a man galvanize all of his forces into giving the best he's ever had. Shades much as much as Douglas did in Tokyo. All right, and you've got shades of Muhammad Ali, Henry Cooper here with the torn glove. Harold Letterman, what's the rule? Chip, they get the uh, the fighter who doesn't have the torn glove to a neutral corner. They're not supposed to let a second talk to him. In the meantime, they take advantage of his, his corner and change the glove. They always have a spare set of gloves at all times. But in the famous Henry Cooper, Muhammad Ali incident, there it had the torn glove happened between rounds because Angelo Dundee was trying to find some time for Ali. You said it, it did happen between rounds. Absolutely right. I thought you said it happened <laughs> no, during the round. This, he's punching so hard. I don't know if I've ever seen in a big fight one fighter punching so hard that he actually rips the glove from punching. Well, so far, Holyfield has thrown 45 punches in this round and landed 36 of them. What kind of a war is it? Both men to this point in the fight have landed more than half their shots. And Bert Cooper now has a cut on the side of his right eye. It's a small cut, but... When we resume fighting, there'll be a minute and 29 left in round number five. Bert Cooper, Philadelphia fighter, now lives in Virginia. Come on, baby. You can Jab take the around, you can around. take the fighter on, out of Philadelphia, but you can't take the Philadelphia out of the fighter with this exhibition of courage and will. Courage, yes, but Philadelphia is famous for the left hook. <laughs> with Bert Cooper, it's been the right hand. Maybe he learned that in Virginia. Could be. <laughs> and they go resume. See what he does inside, Bert. He takes that right foot, steps over with it, and bangs with that right hand. Well, let's see if Evander remembers to go, go back to the left of the body and the right uppercut. There it is. There's that yep. uppercut, Jim. He didn't forget. He missed it that time, but he certainly didn't forget it. All right, we'll step back, guys. We'll step ahead of him. taking tremendous punishment. This has become a, a question of wills and conditioning. That's what Evander Holyfield should do, take a step back once in a while, go side to side to make Bert Cooper miss. Get him up, Evander, come on. The conventional wisdom is that Evander Holyfield is the best trained, best conditioned heavyweight in the sport and maybe in the history of the sport. But is he overtrained coming into this fight? Cooper lands a left hook, and round five comes to a close. You're okay, man. You're okay. Take your time and pick your shots. Stay inside. Hold no, head back. No. Three. Cut. Yeah. It's on the eye leg. You're doing all right. You're doing all right, though. Come on. Get him in deep. Pick the yeah. about that yeah. cut. Let's, let's take a look at the effect of these uppercuts. Look at that beautiful uppercut by a, a Vander Holyfield. And watch the way he works it over time. One on top. There it is.
Cooper's again underneath. How Bert Cooper is taking that punishment and firing back is beyond me. Eddie takes some of that off. Mills Lane instructs Eddie Aliano, Bert Cooper's cut man, to take some of the grease off of his right eye. You may remember before the fight, fellas, that I said that sometimes we're surprised by these kinds of fights because it's not as easy on the champion as we anticipated. And this is sure one of those times. First time I've seen a fan that with a little bounce in his legs, though, is when he came out of the corner, Jim. But he's right back inside again. Now he's bouncing a little bit. He can punch and move. He punches and waits for the receipt. Exploding right hand by Cooper to the body. Holyfield again with the uppercut. And a punch. There goes Evander again. Anytime he lands a punch, he stays still and waits for the receipt. Waits for the guy to hit him back. And Cooper is hitting him with left hooks and sneaky inside right hands. You know, Evander Holyfield always had a problem with stamina in the amateurs. It's never really showed in the pros, but in this fight, he seems to me like he's a little weary. Well, one thing you know for sure, gentlemen, regardless of what happens from here on out, some of the writers here are going to write tomorrow that if Evander had fought this way against Mike Tyson, he'd have been knocked out. Or he may have knocked out Mike Tyson. That's possible, too. I mean, do you think Tyson could take those uppercuts that Evander was nailing Cooper with? opening up on the right eye of Burt Cooper and I mentioned the name Eddie Aliano as you watch that cut throughout the fight remember that Aliano is one of the best if not the best in the business at closing cuts that's so important Jim to have somebody in there that doesn't panic knows what he's doing keeps the fighter in the battle there's that oh what a right hand but they're coming fewer and a little, little more far between Cooper tried the body shot uppercut tandem. Didn't work. Now Evander lands another right uppercut. The heart and will of Evander Holyfield. Much celebrated, but tested tonight. Holyfield has not been knocked down since an amateur fight in 1979. He did not go down to the canvas tonight but it was scored a knockdown by the referee. And we are halfway through. Let's go. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold on. Take it out. What have they got on in front of my eye? Tell the referee. Yo, ref. Hey, ref. Come here, come here. He's burning my eye. He got some kind of ointment that's burning his eyes, coming off his body. Burning his eyes. Get that stuff off his head. He got an ointment on his body. Get inside and dig that body. And do the Tyson inside. We're around right here. Seven. Take him, pick the shot. Dig. There you see the great punch stat numbers. Tremendous number of punches being landed in this fight for heavyweights. Now, er 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 earlier we, we talked about the cut glove. Now we're talking about ointment in an eye, which goes back to Ali Listed One. Well, that wasn't exactly ointment. It was an acidic substance. So we're getting a little bit of everything. We're getting some boxing history in front of us. Let's see how the boxing history winds up. And here's the odd consistency, Larry. Every time in the last 30 years that a man named Cooper has challenged for the heavyweight <laughs> title, there's been a cut glove. <laughs> Another uppercut. I'm surprised that Evander Holyfield isn't using the jab a lot more, Jim. 
when a guy gets tired, it's easy to hit him with a jab. Guys always start out jabbing, and then later on, they forget all about the jab. Now is the time when he can use a good stiff jab. Cooper with two overhand rights, and Holyfield lands another uppercut. You're right, he's almost abandoned the jab for the time being. I wonder if he's embarrassed enough in front of his hometown fans that he wants to score a knockout. He'll be more embarrassed if he gets hit with a couple more of those right hands and goes down. The opportunity to jab is there, you can see it. Bryce Cooper is walking right straight in, in a straight line. Oh, what a bomb that uppercut was. But Cooper keeps coming back. There's another one. Cooper grinning again. A van that has to be saying to himself, what's holding this guy up, and how much more energy can I expend? Do you question his punching power? Well, he's, well, Ray Mercer was also supposed to be a good puncher, and I saw Cooper do exactly the same thing with Ray Mercer, so uh, maybe it's the fact that Cooper can really take a great punch. What a turnaround that would be for Bert Cooper. I saw him quit against Reggie Gross in January of 1986, his first loss, after being hit by one punch. We should point out, Jim, that in those days, he was on drugs, he wasn't training seriously. He really was going down the tubes, and Joe Fraser, his original trainer, claims to have quit him because of that. And Bert Cooper landed some very effective punches to the body in that last exchange. And when a guy gets tired, those body punches can become very, very effective. Well, for a while after that third round flurry, Cooper didn't go to the body at all. But he started to do it again. But now Holyfield rips another uppercut, and Cooper standing stuck still. This could be it now. Only 15 seconds to go in the round. Not much time for Evander. Cooper staying right there. Target practice. But he's not going to get it. I don't think he's going to get it. Mills Lane has seen enough. Mills Lane stops the fight. And I thought it was a very good move on Mills Lane's part. He couldn't have known what the time was. It's probably about 2.58 or 2.59. Doesn't make any around. difference, Larry. But I he was taking too much punishment. He gave a gallant effort. That's enough. I agree. I thought Mills Lane did a remarkable job. He stepped in exactly when he should have stepped in. One of the best in the business, Mills Lane. Well, I'll tell you, if Damiani had been the opponent, we wouldn't have seen this many punches landed if they'd have been here for 50 rounds. <laughs> they wouldn't have seen as many punches landed as if, it, if they took the Queen Elizabeth over and fought on the boat all the way over. Well, gentlemen, thank God for Burt Cooper. <laughs> Although I don't know that Evander Holyfield is saying that right now. What a battle. You know, Jim, in the old days, if a fighter put up a performance like this, the promoter would sometimes be generous and give him a bonus. Do you think that Bert Cooper earned a bonus in this fight? Bert well, Cooper, who's never made more than 100 grand, is getting 750 tonight. Well, no, no, he's getting closer to between four and five. Let's take a look at this impressive barrage, this fusillade of hard punches at the end of the round. But his bonus will be the fact that he will get more fights against some of these young heavyweights. And, and look, at, look at Mills Lane. He's right there, has the action right in front of him, the way a good referee should. This, right on top of things. Yeah, and this, incidentally, as we watch this from another angle, is a homecoming for Mills Lane. The mayor you see there, he was, he's from, Marie, he's from Reno, of course, but he is originally from Georgia, from a prominent family in Georgia. He came here to show his stuff, and he came through. And so did Evander Holyfield. In desperate trouble in round number three, challenged in a way that few expected him to be challenged by a Burt Cooper who showed heart and will and courage and a heck of a right hand. Holyfield demonstrated that the well-publicized heart is by no means overestimated. He came back from adversity, took over the fight again, and banged Cooper out of there. Jim, it was just an absolutely great performance by both fighters. You have to remember that uh, Cooper had Holyfield on the edge of a, right on the brink of a KO. It looked to me that any second Holyfield could go, even after he made that rally back, he was still, Cooper was still dangerous and he still had 
Holyfield in trouble. And this says it all. Mills Lane with the sympathetic nod to Cooper like, yeah, you were great. But that was it. And right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, before I give the official time, how about a round of applause for a young challenger here tonight who showed a great amount of courage and fighting heart, Bert Cooper. The official time, referee Mills Lane steps in and stops the bout. Two minutes, 58 seconds of the seventh round. The winner by TKO, still the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander, real deal. Field. All right, let's go to Larry Merchant with the heavyweight champion of the world. Larry? Amanda, congratulations. Uh, that was an easy one. No, uh, it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> Barry Cooper was very gain, and uh, for a guy to jump in there uh, not too long for a notice, you know, he fought his hard out. And I have to commend him, you know, for for you know, wanting the title. Did, did you jump on him early instead of boxing because you felt that he couldn't be in good condition? Well, not at all. Uh, uh, Bert Cooper, the type of guy, wants to get the momentum. You know, he, it's easy for him to stand there. Is, you know, my strategy is to go out there and try to frustrate him from the start, try to uh, make sure is he in condition to jump on him, where he has to use that energy early and not just coast through the, the early rounds and. Have some for the later. Right, I guess the real thing we all want to know was how badly were you hurt in the fourth round? Well, you know, I wasn't hurt badly. I, I don't know how bad one could be hurt. You know, he hit me with good shots, and it's, uh, I guess it would be quite common if you get hit with consecutive punches like I got hit with at the time and uh, the point of recovery. Well, Evander, you were reeling around there almost like you didn't know quite where you were. You know, I, I, I was, I, I feel that I had, uh, I had everything together, but when you get hit with a good shot, it's not like you can bring your body back uh, together like you want to. My mind was there, and I realized, you know, that he hit me with a good shot, and I was trying to keep him hitting, uh, getting hit with another shot, but I guess that time didn't have control of the whole body at the time. Did your conditioning get you through? Sure. Well, yeah, yeah, conditioning is a big part of it. Conditioning is when uh, you get hit with a good shot and you're able to come back as quick as if I, you know, if I did. You threw a tremendous number of uppercuts in that fight. That landed. How did he take those punches? Well, I, I feel that uh, when you're in a situation with Bert Cooper, you know, don't take nothing from him. He got a lot to gain. And by coming out and taking the fight on the short notice, he just, he was geared up and he came out to fight and, and wasn't taking nothing for granted. Were you trying to be too impressive in your hometown trying to get him out of there too fast, do you feel? Well, not at all. I, I went out there and uh, I did what I felt that was right at the time. You know, I boxed him and he got in now to make it uh, more of a, a brawl. I couldn't get away from him fast enough to use the boxing tactic because it was early in the round, it was just brute strength. And he was he was strong enough to force me into fighting uh, a more of a, a brawling type fight right then and there. It didn't, it didn't really look like you ever boxed him the way you said you would box. You you indicated you were never going to get in one of those slugfests again. Well, you know, you go you go in you go into a fight with a thought of plan. Well, I'm a boxer's guy, but uh, uh, he was uh, aggress aggressive enough to put me in a fight that I didn't want to be in, but I was forced to fight that fight uh, that he would still load the rounds. All right, let's look ahead now. You've been in the gym for almost every day for three, three months. months. What are your plans? Is, are you going to just wait to see the outcome of Mike Tyson's legal difficulties before you get back in the gym? Just how are you going to go about it? Actually, I really just, I would like to go back and rest. Uh, I truly believe that been in the gym a long time, stuck a little starch out, but you know, I, I need to rest and get myself back mentally and not, you know, worry about Mike Tyson problem or anybody else problem right now. Just, you know, get plenty of rest and be ready for the you know, next fight. Uh, just one quick question to Lou. Do you think that you're just going to go on ice now until 
Tyson's difficulties are resolved? No, we ma we manage uh, we manage and train Evander Holyfield. He's his own man. Uh, we're not going to wait around for Mike Tyson. When Mike Tyson becomes available, we'll be glad to fight him the following day. Up until then, he's going to do his own he's going to do his own so, thing. So there is a chance he might take on another opponent before Tyson. Absolutely not. We're not going to just sit around and wait for Tyson. We'd like to fight Tyson tomorrow if we could, but if he's not available, then we'll go on to somebody else. I don't really think you want to fight Mike Tyson tomorrow after a night like this, but, <laughs> but congratulations, Evander. Back to you, Jim and All Gil. All right. Thanks very much, Larry. Gil, time to assess what we saw. The first question, how much of it was bad Holyfield? How much was great Cooper? Well, as Evander Holyfield himself said, Bert Cooper made him fight the kind of fight that Bert Cooper wanted to fight. In other words, Bert Cooper was doing the dictating in there. And as we had mentioned earlier in the show, Evander beat him at his own game. That's just about what happened in the fight. So that's a good statement on Evander's ability to adjust. Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it. He fought Bert Cooper's fight, and he still won the fight. Does his chin become more questionable than ever before after the knockdown in round number three, or what was scored a knockdown? No, I don't think so, Jim. You know, if a heavyweight, one good heavyweight, especially a guy that has a snap on the punch that Bert Cooper has, if he, if he hits anybody right, they're going to wobble. And that's what uh, Evander Holyfield did. Let's see if Bert can wobble Larry Merchant. Larry? Okay, Bert, that was a great fight you put on, particularly the fact that you didn't have a long time to prepare for this fight. But as you promised us, you didn't quit. No, I didn't quit. No, no. I would just, I would just, uh, I don't know, uh, just a referee, you know, see something he didn't like. Yeah, so why, didn't, why didn't the referee stop the fight whenever you, Evander was in trouble uh, like in that? In the fourth round, you hurt Evander. Uh -huh. Are you going to be looking back on that round for the rest of your life, asking yourself, why couldn't I have finished him? Yes, yeah. You're be asking but, uh, yourself, why did Mills Lane step yeah, in and stop but, uh, the fight? You but are uh, we, we get another chance, I hope, you know. I hope we get another chance before he retired. You know? does, does the, do you think that somehow this fight, this showing, uh, uh, puts away the, re the your career, which has been up and down and and uh, erratic, uh -huh. and that this puts you on a different track as an athlete? Yes, exactly. No more ESP in fights. No more, no more ESP in fights. No more, uh, yeah, ESP in fights. No more ESP in fights. Well, no, unless it's a little, you know, something to get in shape with. No fight to stay in shape. Thank you very much, Bert. We'll be happy to have you back here on each HBO. Back to you, Jim. All right, Larry. Well, we sure wouldn't have said that after Cooper fought our own George Foreman. George made Bert quit on the stool after two rounds, but of course, Cooper says that that was after a long weekend of partying, three days without sleep, and certainly entirely different conditions than the kind that Bert brought into the ring tonight. George Foreman joins us once again live from Houston, and George. What do you think? Most exciting fight you've ever seen? Boy, I was never so nervous in all my life. So excited. The best fight I've seen. But I can tell you this, the referee should be crowned. <laughs> he saved uh, Evander Holyfield, and yet at the same time, he stopped the fight, didn't give the other guy, and standing eight count. Strange happenings in the heavyweight championship fight. I don't like it. Evander Holyfield, I want you to know I want one more chance at him. And uh, I'm going to tie the referee's hand, put handcuffs on him, feed him hamburgers and cheeseburgers where he can't move around and stop me. And I'm going to be heavyweight champ of the world again. So you're suggesting that you are in sympathy with the Burt Cooper second we heard in the background there saying, why didn't he stop the fight when Holyfield is in trouble? Is that right? Well, you're a journalist. Tell it like it is. As Howard Cosell would say, tell it like it is. And the people at home, you can fool some of the people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people. Some of the time, is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. pretty close. Hey, George, <laughs> I've got to guess that what you saw tonight convinces you that in another shot at Evander Holyfield, you're going to knock him out and be world champion again. Is that, that right? That's no, that's no doubt in my mind, but there's a young Jimmy Ellis somewhere out there lurking to do the same thing to me that Burt Cooper did to Evander Holyfield today. Now, I've definitely got to stop eating. I've got to stop eating. I've got to stop eating. <laughs> Stop. We're not really sure that's possible. What kind of shape are you in? Oh, I'm in good shape, healthy, but I believe there's someone sabotaging me. Every time I finish working out, there's a plate of barbecue, plate of baked beans, chili, and all that stuff. Somebody there's a rumor, George, there's a rumor that you weigh 280 pounds when you went into training. That's a lie. I was only 279. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> 
All right, George. We <laughs> anyway, will see I enjoyed the fight. It was a wonderful night. I've never seen you not enjoy a fight, so that was the uh, <laughs> safest prediction of the evening. I met James Steptoe, Jody's house. He yeah. let me use this house for HBO, and he's, give, he's feeding me. All right, come and see us in Reno in a couple weeks, and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Right. Thanks, Jody. All right, thanks, George. Larry Merchant joins us once again at ringside, and Larry, amazing stuff, huh? <laughs> It sure is. The theater of the unexpected strikes again. Bingo. I guess there's an old saying that you can't come home again. Holyfield showed that you can come home again, but it isn't easy. <laughs> Boy, he, he took a lot of shots today. I think he's been in the gym a little bit too long, but give the other guy credit, just as I gave Buster Douglas credit in Tokyo. The other guy came, fought his heart out to, to seize the opportunity that is there to win the richest crown in sports but give Holyfield credit when he was threatened, when he was wobbled, when he was hurt, pulled himself together like a champion, pulled the fight out, onward and upward. Hey, <laughs> say for a second that you're the manager of a Riddick Bow or a Michael Moore or a Lennox Lewis. A promoter calls you tomorrow and says, I want you to fight Burt Cooper. What do you say? I think they'll want to fight Burt Cooper. I think, uh, uh, first of all, Bert Cooper had a lot taken out of him. He took a tremendous number of hard blows to the head. Uh, he ought to take six months off. But all of these young fighters trying to prove who they are, trying to prove championship worthy, are now going to put him on the list as a good opponent, someone perhaps they can look better than Holyfield did, uh, and project themselves ahead. I wouldn't be surprised uh, in our night of the heavyweights February 1st if Burt Cooper wasn't fighting uh, one of the heavyweights who were in there. All right. We'll look forward to that. And since we've had the rare privilege of having Gil Clancy with us tonight, let's get one more word from him. You heard George Foreman criticize Mills Lane's stoppage, which you called a great one. What do you think of what George said? Well, I, I, I think that, uh, first of all, that Mills Lane stopped the fight exactly when he should have stopped the fight. He, he very well couldn't have stopped the fight. Evander Holyfield was never even on the deck. They counted, they counted, they gave him an eight count that he wasn't even on the deck. And after that, he it came on at the end of the round. So I, I think that Mills Lane did the, did the proper thing when he uh, allowed the fight to continue with Holyfield and did the proper thing in stopping the fight when Bright Cooper was in bad trouble. All right, Gil, if you'll move away, we can ask Mills himself about these situations. Step in here a second, Mr. Judge. Thank you, sir. Mills Lane I just criticize you again, Mills. What Thank can you. I tell you? Thanks. He's ripping you eight ways from Sunday. <laughs> We're going to take a look at the end of the fight. George Foreman has criticized your stoppage of this fight, saying, hey, Holyfield was in just as much trouble earlier in the fight. Tell us what went through your mind. Well, first off, you have to recognize that you have known what's going on before. He'd been hit numerous times before. Then what happened is he lost the ability to defend himself, and he just was getting nailed. I mean, nailed and nailed and nailed. And as a matter of fact, one of his corner men that got great respect for came in and said, thanks, Mills. It was time. And Bird himself said nothing, but you didn't knowing what went on before. I mean, he'd been, sh they took turns shellacking each other, but early in the fight when both of them were hurt, they still had resiliency. They could come back. But he just lost the ability to defend himself. And I mean, God, to get somebody killed uh, so seriously, I just don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I know it's the last thing you want. Now, just for one technicality for the record, there's no standing eight count correct. in this fight. So you ruled Holyfield as a knockdown in round number three. That's correct. He, he would have fallen, but for the ropes. That is a knockdown in this state and in our state. All right. It's the first time he's been knocked down since 1979. Okay. There's a distinction Thanks, for you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mills. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. So that concludes what has been an exceptionally exciting night of heavyweight boxing for us from Atlanta. We've only got a few more little details to take care of with you tonight, starting with this one. And it's coming up on December 3 and 10, an unbelievably important show for us. Play. What a catch by Lynn's By play. She is gone! Thrill. Why doesn't he go? By thrill. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Memory. Believe in miracles! Yes! By memory. The greatest moments in sports, relived by the greatest broadcasters in television, only on HBO. It's an unprecedented look inside the innovations, the pro.